would take the church hymnal, let's stand and sing when the roll is called over yonder. Sometimes we say, sometimes we say over yonder and down yonder. When we say up yonder, we talk about heaven. Amen. All right, number two forty. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. Turn to number 16. Number 16. I know he heard my prayer. Number 16. <laughs> Thank you. 
around. Satan comes around and he starts trying to cast some doubt. He starts trying to take away your victory, right? But I know, I know. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He heard my prayer. Amen. When I asked him to come into my heart, he heard my prayer. Yes. Amen. Amen. He hears our prayer today. He'll hear my yeah. prayer tomorrow. I know he heard my prayer. Amen. Let's sing that second, okay? <laughs> oh, Lord, that's heard my prayer.
Yeah. Hey, folks, I don't think. I know. I know. Don't think. I know. Yeah, I know. I don't think. Oh, I know. Yeah. My name is written there. I don't care what happens. I don't care what happens. I know my name is written. Hey, Praise yeah. God. Hey, Do you know there's people walking around that don't know? Yeah. Man. I know yeah, my no. name is Amen. Right there. Amen. If you want to turn to number 181, number 181. Let's be sure. Ha, <laughs> 
family uh, come to support uh, their kids, their grandkids, friends, nieces and nephews, cousins, I don't know all of here, but we thank y'all for coming. Let me tell y'all something to all y'all visitors, families that's coming to watch your kids be baptized. We like, we like y'all to be comfortable about this, so while we're baptizing, if you want to come up and take pictures or set up while we're doing that, we're okay. You don't have to stay there. If you want to get a better place, just leave the main viewing area open so the church can see it. But man, y'all can get any way you want on the sides and take pictures because it is a special day. Amen. A special day. Amen. Uh, this baptizing <laughs> is not what saved these kids. That's exactly right. They asked the Lord to save them. And because of that, they want to be obedient yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. And so they'll be baptized today. Um, I want y'all to continue praying uh, for Miss Sadie's family. Brother Leroy's sister passed away last night. Be praying for her husband, Rudy. He's going to have some some long nights coming to him and so y'all be praying for Rudy uh, y'all ladies don't forget or anybody who wants to you need to meet after church right down front I know all that's been said but I just I just want to remember we're also going to take up a, 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 that offering I asked some of y'all last week I've told y'all that we I felt like we needed to help brother Chris uh, to try to help there let me tell you what happened the church did take up eleven hundred dollars last month uh, last week, eleven hundred dollars. She called me two hours afterwards because you know she done like all, everybody does. You hand them a check, they just stick it in the pocket. She called me two hours later. She was crying. She said <laughs> to get him from the hospital to home and get everything set up was sixteen hundred dollars. She said the medicine that to take to get him home was six hundred dollars. She said. <laughs> Uh, there was a, a business in this town that gave us a thousand dollars. She said, "Y'all gave us eleven hundred <laughs> And then some of the men got together at Chris's business and gave them. He said, "She said God covered every dime." Amen. Amen. And boy, she is crying and <clears throat> thanking the church. And but there was a lot of y'all that told me that you you didn't know we was taking it up. Nobody knowed. Uh, God told me to do it, and we did it. Um, and then y'all's church, all oh, this church always amazes me how you give. And so, um, could we do it next Sunday? So we are doing it today. And then, so at the end of the service, uh, uh, there'll be somebody at the back with a basket, just like we did last time. There's not, you know, if you want, if you can, you can. If you can't, you can't. We don't force nobody or beg and on. Then you just put something in. That's all it is. And uh, mm. let's see what God does again. And it just amazes me. But anyway, I need my ushers to come forward. We'll take up the tithe and offering, give it back to God, what he's gave to us this week. And can I tell you, he's been good. Amen, all the time. He's been found faithful again yes. this week. Yes, he has. Brother Lee, would you pray? Okay, brother, would you pray? Dear Lord, thank you for the song service. Yeah, we thank you. Amen. <laughs> Yes. I praise you. Yeah, me and my family get through these next few days, Lord. Lord, rest on. Thank you for everybody that showed up today for the service, God. Be with Brother Penn as he brings the message, Lord. Open our ears so we can learn, God. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.
come and take up our missionary offering. Our church supports 50 missionaries around the world. the money a while ago for the missionaries and I put my in her bucket she says I got the preacher's money <laughs> why is that such a big deal <laughs> why does people like to get the preacher's money <laughs> all right for all y'all are getting baptized today I want y'all to stand up and tell us Get your family to stand up. We want to know who your family is and who your friends are that are here. Brother Ben, why don't you start? Um, on the left is my dad, Dennis Robinson. He was in Simon's, my grandmother, Marie Robinson. My sister, Marie Robinson, and my mom, Sherry Robinson. <laughs> Good. Amen. I want you to know your boy has been a blessing. Amen. And I say this, y'all have done a good job. <laughs> Amen. And so thank you for letting us have it for on Sundays. We enjoy it. He's a blessing. Every time he wears a suit, somebody gets saved, so he's not wearing a suit today. Nobody knows. <laughs> he just don't care if somebody gets saved today, I reckon. Mindy. This is my mom and dad. Glenn McDaniel and Jennifer McDaniel. And then this is my boyfriend, Brandon, and his parents, George and Andrea, and his sister, Lily. I want to say this about y'all's two girls. Y'all got right at two times at one time. And, uh, you know, one always tells me they're more special than the other. We won't go there and tell who it was, but they do. And uh, But it's good that you allow them to be here. Y'all doing a good job. We sure appreciate y'all's, y'all's girls. Amen. And thank you for allowing to come. Who are y'all letting them see? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but man, thank y'all for letting them be a part of our family. Go ahead and say it, Carol. You want to come Oh, uh, well, I don't have any family here. Most of my family is actually watching on the live stream because my mom lives up in East Ridge. But yeah, they're on the live stream. and then I had to teach him how to sing other parts. And, um, so every now and then we uh, sing together. Uh, Chuck asked me to sing this morning. I was like, Lord, what am I going to do? And, uh, I was flipping through my book and several came to my mind. And then I thought, well, me and Timmy can do this. He's going to kill me. But um, it just came to my heart. You know, there's nothing better in my 
my life to the Lord. And he's just been so good to me. Yeah, we've got these kids that got saved and um, you've got your whole life ahead of you, but whatever you do, keep God in it. Yes. In everything. Um, so we're going to try this. We don't, like I said, we don't normally sing together and I can't remember the last time we even did this, but...
1994, I was leaving church. I was on the back porch leaving. It was over. It's done. I'd made it through it one more time. I'd been through some stuff in life where it just you ain't loved. I mean, they just give up on me and walked out, and I, I wasn't nothing nobody loved. And yeah. I was about off that porch, and Amen. the Lord said, today's the day. He said, if I rejected him again, he wouldn't come again. That'd be over. I was going to take one more step off that porch. Yep. And God yeah. showed me if I took that next step, that step would end up in hell. Come on. But if I turned around, he'd love me and he'd save me. So I turned around back in the church and asked God to save me, and he did. And that line, that song says, every time I failed him, he's prevailed. Hey, I quit him. I can't tell my testimony without saying how I quit and went home and give up and pouted. Because I did. But God come by one day and he said, I still want you. Yeah. He didn't say I want you back. He said, I ain't never lost you to begin with. You're the one that left. I still Amen. want you. I still love you. Even though you've done Amen. some unlovable things. Amen. And he brought me back to himself. Hey, it's been worth it ever since. I, I, I pray to God I never quit him again. But God walks with me every day. The world likes to remind me how unfit and unlovable I am. But God loves me. My yeah, name's man. up there with him. It don't matter yes. if I ever got a name down here or not. Thank God I know where it's at. Amen. 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 The town's been working hard with these young people. The two of the young people that were fixing to baptize today was during that tent revival. And when he come and talked to me about it, I was like, no, it's, it's during the pandemic. They won't nobody come. And, and if he'd have listened to me, seven people would not be saved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told him, he comes and asks me sometimes, he said, what do you think I'll do? I'm thinking about doing this. I said, what's God tell, told you? Because, man, we got to learn to follow God, not man. That's right. 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 And I'm thankful to him and Lamar, Brother Lamar prayed. The young people went out there and prayed, and I'm glad that some of them got saved out there. Man, I just thank God for it. Hey, boy. And we're fixing to have a baptizing here in a little bit. Turn to your Bibles to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Y'all know the story of Nicodemus, the religious ruler. I'm convinced today we got a lot of religious people inside the church house that don't even know for sure if they're saved or not. That's not a bad thing. It's bad to stay there and not get it down. You need to know. You need to know. Amen. You need to know that you're saved. Yeah. Bro Chuck, you know you're saved? Yes, sir. You know your name's written up there. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Leroy, you know you're saved. I know I'm saved. You can know. Yeah. The Bible says you can know. Amen. I really believe, y'all, there's preachers that don't know for sure what they're saved. I've seen preachers' wives get saved in revivals. I've seen deacons get saved. You ought to know. Hey, boy. You ought to know. Amen. Let me, let me, let me read. Start in verse 1. John chapter 3 and verse 1. That wasn't a message. I get paid overtime when I go off my list. <laughs> there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Now the Pharisee is just a religious group. A ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Just can't get this off my heart. All he knew, but Tim, all he knew that Jesus was a teacher that come from God. That's all he knew. That will not get you to heaven. Amen. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. That sounded really good. Jesus answered and said unto him, went straight to the, straight to the heart. Yes. Verily, verily. 
Anytime you see that in the Bible where it says it twice, God's making a point and he's making it really hard. Yeah. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus goes answers and he goes back into that verily, verily thing again. I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. In other words, Nicodemus, don't get hung up on that. Don't try to make it a fleshly thing. Yeah. Don't try to make it an earthly thing. It's a spiritual thing. Amen. And if you're going to get saved, you will have to be born again spiritually. Amen. Man, he's trying to get him to see. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Man, you might not know it's happening. You might not see it happening. But man, it is moving yeah. when somebody gets born again. Yeah, boy. It's like to win. It blows in and blows out. Don't get hung up on the fleshly stuff. Get hung up on the spiritual stuff. Man, I'm fighting not to chase a rabbit. Y'all pray for me. We'll be here for three hours. <laughs> Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Some of y'all are sitting here. What are you talking about being yeah. born again? You still ain't getting it. I ain't figured it out. Man, I just don't understand it. I'm not for sure I've even done it. Can I tell you, if you, first of all, you can't be saved unless the wind blows in here, which is a type of the Holy Spirit, and draw you to Calvary. A man will not get saved unless he's drawn by the Holy Ghost uh, to, the, to, the, to Calvary. You can't do it. Wind blows in here and settles on a man or a woman's heart and sits there and breathes on him with a little bit of truth and says you're lost and you're on your way to hell unless you repent and ask the Lord to save you. There's no hope for you. Man, that fear grips. That's the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blows in here. You better thank God he blows in here and yeah. does that. Amen. Amen. And if your answer is this right here, not today, I'll do it tomorrow, that wind blows on. Yeah. That's right. And he's not promised that that wind's got to blow back by That's again. Right. That's right. But if you're sitting there and that wind comes blowing in there, let me get it. That's why I won't use wind anymore. The Lord used wind. The Holy Spirit blows in here settles on your heart, messes up your belief system, <laughs> tears you out of the frame. Yeah. You sit there and grip a hold of the pew. I've seen people's knuckles turn white. I've seen people cry in the pew. I've seen people get under so much conviction that they won't even look at me while I'm preaching. I've seen people sit there and deny it while they're sitting there. And boy, they're scared. Their face is done turned white. Their bottom lip is quivering. Uh, they done had all they can handle of the Holy Ghost hanging them out over hell. And if their thought says, yeah, if that preacher will ever shut up and call an altar call, I'm going to go down to the altar. The Holy Spirit just stays and blows in that one place. Man, I thank God that the Holy Spirit that knows how to handle the decisions we make. 
Amen. I'm thankful uh, that the Holy Spirit, uh, people are in trouble, uh, people are in need, and they're needing some help that day. They're saved by the grace of God. And I'm thankful, I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit knows our need as He's a blowing by and He'll flutter around somebody and He'll say there's some help at the altar. I've seen people, saved people, stand and grip the pew and still won't get the help uh, from the altar that the Holy Ghost is a wooing them and drawing them to. Yeah. I'm thankful that people, uh, when the Holy Holy Ghost save people when the Holy Ghost flies in here and tells them I'm here to help you but you're going to have to get up to get it that they will be some that will get up in the middle of a song and go get some help I'm yeah. thankful yeah. that the Holy Ghost knows how to stick around yeah. or to go on hey, by the decisions that we make. Yeah. And there's some of y'all that's going to go home today that is saved, but you won't have, get no help because you won't follow the leading of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you saved? Mm-hmm. No. You know you're saved? About a third of the church knows they're saved. The other two-thirds are still trying to make up their mind. No, I'm teasing. We just only got a third amens. You got a need in your life today? You saved? But man, there's some things going on. Can you feel it? The Holy Ghost has been here since Sunday school. Yeah. Amen. There are some Sorry. days, Brother Logan, I come in here, I don't feel the Spirit. That doesn't mean that He's not here where two or three are gathered. Yeah. Guess who's in the midst? Praise God. But there's some days I just don't feel it. But somebody else over there being stirred. You know why? That Holy Ghost is sitting over there just making the wind blow through their heart. (coughs) He's making the tears flow. He's trying to help somebody at the depths of despair. He's trying to get you to look upward. We're not even into the (laughs) message. And I'm not apologizing for it. And the Holy Ghost this morning has been here and has settled down here. The Holy Ghost has just, uh, is being helped uh, by the people that wants to praise and worship God. God has sent the Holy Spirit amongst the people. He's been here ever since Acts chapter 2. He just likes to hover around the church. Boy, he likes to help the church. Uh, He likes to strengthen the church. He likes to comfort because he is the comforter. He likes to comfort the church. But sometimes a church member will get scared or prideful and they'll say, not today, not today. Everybody knows my problem if I go out there then the ones I don't want to know will know that I got a problem and you won't get no help today. And so Nicodemus here, he's coming to Jesus. He's trying to, he's coming in tonight. Uh, Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. He knows he's a sinner. He knows he needs help. God straightway took him. Didn't even answer. Didn't even discuss with if I'm a good teacher or not. Took him straight to Nicodemus' name. Nicodemus, you're a spiritual man. I mean, a, 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 a religious man. You're a church man. But you're a lost man and you need to be saved. Can I tell you this? In this story here, Nicodemus didn't get saved. And can I tell you that when the Lord got done speaking in in verse 21, the Lord was done. Because Nicodemus didn't make a decision. The Lord could have kept trying to sway him. God don't work like that. He will let you know he loves you. 
He'll let you know that he died on the cross for you as you and your sin upon him. He'll know, he'll let you know all that. He'll turn around and say, you're a sinner. Well, he told that woman at the well that. Where does it say he called her a sinner? No, he just ran and said, how many husbands have you got? Straight to it. Yeah. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 that we're all sinners. Uh, yeah. But the Holy Ghost will let you know if you're not a sinner, you don't need Jesus. He come to seek and save those that were lost, not those that were righteous. Thank God that I qualified, brother, when I got saved. I was a sinner. He went straight to the point with Nicodemus. Nicodemus, you must be born again. Some of y'all must, must be born again. Yeah. Amen. And God's going to make you make a decision. Right. God's going to force you. He's not going to force you to get saved, but he's going to force you to make a decision. And you'll either come and be saved this morning because you know you're lost. You know you're a sinner. <coughs> or you'll sit in your pew and decide. You don't decide no. There ain't too many people that crazy. What you'll decide is not today. Not now. Else, some of y'all been in church your whole life. Been a Sunday school teacher. Been a deacon. Been a preacher. And you're sitting there just tore up this morning because the Holy Ghost has went by your way. And you don't know for sure. Did I mean it? Did I didn't mean it? I'm not sure. And you're going to make a decision this morning whether you're going to Decide to know or not know. Some of you will say this. I can't go down there. Everybody thinks I'm saved. Some of you will say this. I'm a visitor. This ain't my church. Not today. Not today. <clears throat> and you'll walk out with the Holy Ghost blowing through you. Yeah. And reject the wind that you feel from God. Because you decided not today. Not today. Miss Phyllis, come on. Come on. If you don't mind, just play. Everybody knows it. Just as I am. Can I tell you this? Jesus did not try to fix Nicodemus' sins. He did not try to clean him up a little bit before he saved him. He wanted to save him in his lost condition. Yeah. Just as he is. Well. Church, if you know you're saved, you really need to be praying. Heaven and hell and a man or a woman is being weighed in the balance today and they're making a decision already whether I'm going to step out or I'm going to sit here I was going to preach on we speak what we know there's one thing I know I'm saved. Amen. Not because I'm a good boy, but because I called on the name of the Lord. No. Yes. Some of y'all might not move because you won't you won't know what to do. Call one of these teenagers. They've been taught how to lead somebody to the Lord. Ask me. I'd be glad to show you some scriptures. But let me just tell you the simplest way to be saved. Yeah. The Bible said in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, for whosoever, for whosoever, that means anybody, yes. for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Lord, 
Lord, I'm a sinner. Would you please save me? That Holy Ghost will blow, blow by and say, that was the right words. <laughs> yes. yeah. right. Man on the cross said, remember me this day. Holy Ghost said, that's the right words. Yeah. <laughs> that's the right words. The woman that was needing help come to Jesus. She admitted that she was a dog. All she said was, help Lord. Holy Ghost flowing by and said, that was it. No. Would you please stand? You need some help today? Yeah. You're saved by the grace of God and you know it. You're born again. Your name's written in heaven and you know it, but your life's turned upside down. Why don't you come and get some help this morning? Why don't you come and get around the altar? Why don't you come and ask God to blow by in your life and help you with your problems? Why don't you come by and say, Lord, please, I need some help. I'm begging you, begging you not to sit there in your pew. You can get some help today, some lasting help. where God called him to be. Hear me, Aiden. Aiden, Abraham was in the place God wanted him to be. A chosen place. A fixed place. Abraham decided this place is too hard. It's drying up. There's no touch of God here. There's no rain. And he heads off down to Egypt. God says, what are you doing here? Get back to where I told you your spot is. So he picks up Lot and his wife and he heads back to the spot where he was supposed to be at. Do you know what the first thing he did, Ben, when he got there? The very first thing. Some of us sometimes 
is in the perfect place of God. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we decide to up and get out of that place for whatever the reason was. And God says, man, you need to get back to that spot. <laughs> and we get back to that spot, but we don't hit the altar. Anyway, well, I thank you all for coming. If you come back tonight, you'll get the message that I studied on. <laughs> baptize three kids. Y'all can go back and start getting ready, change clothes. Um, we're going to sing a couple of songs while we're changing <coughs> clothes. Any of y'all parents, aunts, uncles, friends, if you want to get on either side and take pictures with your phone or with your camera, we're all about that. Special day in the life. Amen. Write it down for them so they don't forget it. That's right. Church, when they come up out of that water, man, say amen. amen. I mean, they've scored a touchdown, they obey yeah. God. Yeah. You ought to shout for them. When, when, while they're singing, you need, Brother Donald, would you please be moving us? Sing in the celebration hymnal number 602 in the celebration hymnal number 602.
in the creek in the winter time. And I said, yeah, but Brother Tim's going to baptize you. <laughs> and they said, well, we don't mind. Well, then, then it all got changed. They thought it was supposed to rain today. And so they planned to have it here. I thank the Lord for that. <laughs>
his faith, I baptize thee, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Something to me, he went to the altar, 
I didn't know what he said. I just kept going because there's no way this is the one I was talking about. No way. Being saved, I know that. So finally, I did go down to the altar and pray with him like I usually do. And that's when he told me he was getting saved. He's so excited. I mean, I was so real. I thought, I literally stood up and apologized and said, maybe I missed it tonight preaching. Maybe God didn't tell me what I thought he told me. But he got saved and it, it, it let me know God didn't lie to me. Hallelujah. And God will save anybody. It don't matter. Thank you. If I drop him, y'all have to. <laughs> Giving, you need to pick that up on the way out. It's back there too. Y'all tell all the visitors. 